Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 29 and we're going to be looking at organic reaction pathways. What we are asked to do here is to draft and construct flow charts. And these flow charts are designed to show reaction pathways for chemical synthesis, um, including those that involve more than one step. So there's a couple of important things to remember here. We need to be able to show how um, substance one is forming substance two, and potentially how substance two could form substance three. It may well be that we're looking at certain steps where substance three may form substance four and through a certain process may even be able to return to substance one. The other thing that's very important, of course, is that within each of these reactions, there may be certain conditions associated with uh, the reaction that we also want to try and identify. So this is something that I'll give you a very quick look at, one of the diagrams that's come out of the uh, one of the textbooks, and also a uh, an example from a group of students um, that have had a go at this already, um, to see A, what we can learn, and B, how you can um, reproduce this kind of process in order to give you a really good summary of all of the key reactions that are part of the organic chemistry module. And it'll give you a really nice way of trying to memorize not only a lot of these different functional groups, but also um, how we get from one group to another. So let's have a quick look. So here's a figure from one of the textbooks, and you can see that this is a very generalized kind of a flow chart. So what we've looked at are homologous series, and you can see a number of these listed here, the alkanes, the alkenes, the haloalkanes, the aldehydes, uh, the esters, and so on. How do we get from one group to another? Uh, well, this kind of a flow chart gives you a really good summary of each of these key processes. Of course, there's, there's information missing. And one of the things that it's really important for you to do as we analyze a lot of these is to try and get an understanding of um, your own knowledge of these processes and what might uh, you add in order for you to better understand what's going on. So one very important um, pair of reactions, for example, is the reaction sequence where we can convert an alkene into an alcohol or an alcohol into an alkene. Now all we're doing is adding water to our alkene to produce an alcohol. And so, of course, one of the things that you can see from this particular diagram is that in terms of the direction, they have got these arrows back to front. And this is one of the things that's that's um, sort of thought it would be useful to highlight to you. So obviously, if you're going to go from an alcohol and you're going to an alkene, you're actually going to need to lose water, not actually gain water. Um, and in order to do that, we use a catalyst. And the catalyst that we use for our conversion um, is sulfuric acid. You can use phosphoric acid as well, but sulfuric acid is a good example to pick um, because we're probably more familiar with it to begin with, and also because we want to make sure that we keep this process as easy for ourselves as possible. Now, the difference between um, the sulfuric acid that we use to catalyze the reaction between an alkene or from an alkene to an alcohol or from an alcohol to an alkene is the concentration. So which of these is which? Well, in order to dehydrate the alcohol, that is remove the water molecule from the alcohol, we need concentrated. So we need a conch to remove the alcohol and go to the alkene but we need it dilute if we're going to go from the alkene to the alcohol. And of course, when we do that, we're actually adding water. We're not subtracting it. So this is where you need to be very careful when you're looking at these textbooks to just make sure that the information that you're copying down is correct. It's not just um, that you don't just accept it on face value. And I know that's frustrating when you're working with textbooks, um, but we need to make sure that we trust ourselves. We trust the chemical knowledge that we have to make sure that we can follow this through. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these reactions because you've seen most of them in other videos, and obviously you would want to make sure that you've done a number of these in class as well, um, and also to make sure that you've um, got somewhere 
where you've put the conditions down. But if you can produce, particularly on a, a large piece of paper like an A3 sheet, all of these key functional groups with all of these homologous series and how you get from one to another. So, for example, if we carry out the process of fermentation, we know that we need yeast. We know that there's a certain temperature requirement for that as well. That allows us to convert simple sugars like glucose into um, ethanol. And as we go through this process, you should be able to name the conditions because, of course, conditions are going to be critically important when we go through this exercise. Build this up for yourself so that you have a really good, um, complete list of all of these key reactions. They're not going to just be helpful for your organic chemistry, but a lot of these are actually going to come into our last module, which is the um, analysis or the application of chemical ideas. So we actually analyze a number of chemical systems on uh, in the context of what we already know and for some of that it is what we know about um, key organic groups. So here's an example, I'm not going to identify this example but I think it's fantastic. Yes, your teacher did share this and it's not one of my classes so I will let you know that. Um, I think this is an absolutely fabulous um, attempt at doing this whole summarizing of organic reactions. Now what I would ask you to do when you go through this is to be really critical of the process. Think about the fact that um, you uh, I don't expect you would have to go to this much trouble in an HSC exam, but you may well have to re reproduce one or more of these types of reactions through the examination. Um, it's possible I'll ask you to reproduce a flowchart, but I think given you can see the complexity that's associated with these, you'd have to have a, a very large piece of paper in order to do real justice to this kind of a question. Um, but what we can start to do is we can already start to be critical about what's actually going on with these. And you can see we've got a great summary. I might just change colour for a second here. You can see we've got a really great summary in the very center of this board where there are a lot of individual processes that have been identified and then expanded elsewhere. When you look at the expansions, of course, one of the things that you notice is um, just through time, I'm sure as much as anything else, we're missing um, some of the components of these molecules that you would want to make sure that you did in an exam. This is a difference between trying to knock something out quickly when you're trying to focus on memorizing the key important reactions that are occurring as opposed to trying to get everything perfect. Um, this is a really good study tool, but obviously you just want to be um, ensuring that as you go through each of these processes that you are remembering that if you were doing this in under exam conditions that you would add all these key things together. Um, when we're looking at things like our oxidation reactions, uh, would you be wanting to put oxygen down specifically in a form that makes it look like it's diatomic oxygen? Uh, will you write oxidation over the top of the arrow that kind of tells us that this is an oxidation reaction? Or are you going to try and write out the full equation that shows the oxidation of one of these organic compounds into another? You can also see from this example that there are some specifics that have been chosen despite the fact that the formulas in the center are general and give us a really great overview of all of the key reaction sequences. But then each of the um, extensions of each of these is actually a specific example to help us um, identify that process specifically. This is probably one of the most valuable exercises that you can do when you are preparing your um, summary notes, especially for your trials, but critically for your HSC, that you can see at a glance all these important organic chemistry groups, all of the reactions that are involved in the conversion from one group to another. Make sure that you've got these key functional groups visible to you so you can help that helps you identify each of these different areas and even things like distinguishing between primary and secondary alcohols so that you know what they are and then you know what the difference in a say an oxidation reaction is going to be for the different types. Congratulations to the group who had a crack at this. It's not an easy thing to do and it's a really great 
exercise in helping you to clarify what it is that you already know and which areas you want to delve into in a little bit more detail. Um, so keep having a go at this. As I say, this is, this is going to be a really great summary tool. One nice big page with a lot of this stuff together is going to cover a huge amount of what we've looked at in our organic chemistry module. So um, a few other things that we can add in when we do our last section on polymers, and that's all we have left to do in the organic chemistry. And you can even add those into your um, big reaction pathways overview. But uh, certainly something to have a crack at, and thank you for watching.